those of you who been to the department before it got broken down before it got renovated as soon as you enter in the back in the back behind but still visible to all is this corner that's surrounded by cupboards and a lot of tables uh this corner is famously dubbed as the island and on this island there are four tables and the four tables belong to these four professors that you see right here had this event been taking place offline it would be in a very crowded room and everyone would be jam packed in this one small tiny room and yet nobody would be feeling stuffy simply because this is the impact of these professors uh, they are the four cornerstones of the department of english and around them the rest of this department thrives um so i would like to warmly welcome you all to departures and continuity the panel by the english department uh i would like to warmly welcome professor arul mani professor etienne rasindran professor cherian alexander and professor mini mark bonjour to this event um, have fun and thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you anika thank you um today's uh, conversation is titled uh, departures and continuities um the idea of getting us together on a panel was not our own it was sort of uh, offered to us at gunpoint and uh, we oh were told uh, that uh, you know various act so violence and uh, you know uh, harakiri and seppuku and other such japanese oh rituals <laughs> would not be if we did not consent to take part in this panel discussion uh, i pointed to previous history previous occasions at meta where we got together and laughed at each other and basically did everything that panelists are not supposed to do and uh, said that it might attract a little bit from the tone of the festival but uh, since further threats of seppuku and harakiri were made uh, we said okay we will get here and, and uh, uh, you know say things on uh, in public we can embarrass ourselves and possibly our younger colleagues uh, over the course of this hour the focus that we have identified is departures and continuities and i'm interested in looking at what each of these uh, fellow travelers of mine are going to do with this gentle prod that the rubric for today's conversation contains So let's hand it to Cherian first and see what he has to say. Over to you, Cherian. Okay. Uh, how is this structured? Is uh, do is it a free for all or uh, each one gets a? Uh, you can start talking and then if we want to attack okay. you, we'll attack you. Just pull it away from me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Honestly, I was just wondering what I would say. Uh, on a topic like this departures and continuities in terms of departures yeah uh, i <laughs> departed many a time to shamelessly get back <laughs> said farewells and all that and then <laughs> walked right back and that sort of thing so if it is if it is but if it is academic and curricular and all that yeah that's another matter altogether uh i was looking back at my own um, uh education before i came into teaching am i audible can you hear me yes yes um 
this was back in uh, 1982. Uh, we had two years of MA bang at Bangalore University at the time. And uh, in that, in those two years, we heard, I heard nothing about Derrida, uh, deconstruction, postmodernism, any of those things, 80 to 82, when actually they were at the time the rage in uh, Europe and in the American campuses and so on. In fact, by then they were already in some kind of decline. Uh, in, in other words, the wave had uh, di diminished or had uh, be begun to crest and start coming down. Uh, but uh, it's only uh, about six, seven years later that the that wave reached us here, somewhere in the late 80s, 87 or so. Uh, you know, so then we did a lot of reading about all these things. So the uh, when I was in uh, when I joined college uh, in 82, the uh, training we all got was literary criticism and you know T.S. Eliot and F.R. Lewis and their debates and uh, all of those things. Uh, so it, it was, of course, we had, there was uh, Achebe, things fall apart, and so a little bit of the post-colonial was there. Uh, plus, of course, the new nation writings and so on. But uh, today we have uh, made a big departure from all that uh, in terms of the, those being central. And we have moved, uh, I think, in our curricular emphasis uh, towards uh, uh, other and more uh, reconfigured ways of reading the past, etc. So that those have been departures, but there have also been continuities in the sense that I think we still uh, value the pleasure of books and reading, and uh, uh, you know, good, enjoyable fiction and that sort of thing, even. Uh, when we dissect them and analyze them from various uh, perspectives. So I think that has been some kind of continuity. I'll stop here. <laughs> All right. uh, I think uh, one of the uh, things that you could have also mentioned was uh, uh, the insurance you built up over your three and something decades in the department against ever being caught short at the other end of the information supply paradigm with all your <laughs> stockpiles of Xeroxes and, yeah. and books yeah, and yeah. <laughs> other yeah. such aggregators of dust and yeah, yeah, fingerprints. Yeah. True, true, true. That has, uh, yeah, been the thing is, uh, I, I, I was just thinking of uh, this essay by uh, George Orwell, this one we all are familiar with, shooting an elephant. Um, and I think there the whole, his whole emphasis was not to look uh, foolish or something like that before the natives. <laughs> uh, he said, so, <laughs> in some ways, I was driven by this whole thing of uh, I shouldn't make a fool of myself, whatever else I do. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I should have some understanding of a wide range of things uh, because I shouldn't be in a situation where my students find uh, something I do or say ridiculous because it comes from a total lack of knowledge. But that does hasn't prevented me from putting my foot in my mouth many, many times. Anyway, so all that is part of the course, I guess. <laughs> all right. We'll come back and trouble you some more about all the damping admissions you've already made. <laughs> yes. uh, we'll uh, ask Epion to, to send and yeah. tell us what he makes of the uh, departures yeah. and continuities. Right. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Jared, I cut you off. Yeah, uh, Jared, yeah. you have something more to say. Yeah. Uh, Arul, you're breaking. That's. Uh, I don't know whether you're. Is it the internet or is it my end? I don't know. Uh, no, I think actually. it's breaking for me also. 
Yeah. Yeah, it is breaking for you as well. Me as well. Yeah. I didn't hear what you wanted me to say. I was just yeah. wanting to ask you that as well. Departures and continuities and uh -huh. what you make of uh, yeah, okay. those two terms in relation to our department. All right. Okay. Uh, I mean, I think the journey is perhaps for many of us would be probably similar, if not if not the same, in some sense. But and you know, I share much of what uh, Charyan has said about you know people whom we did not know, whom we are reading now, or at least I have been reading quite uh, you know systematically over some time. Uh, but you know uh, that apart, I think one of the <laughs> most crucial elements I think that uh, in this English department can is to help us survive in a classroom, you know? you know, which means that you need to be, you know, to constantly keep working with oneself. I mean, that's what I learned at least a great deal, right? Work, working with oneself, uh, being interested in finding out what went wrong or what went right and, you know, in a classroom. Uh, and all that we ever dreamed of, in my, at least when I began, was that I must be a good teacher. I mean, I should not let my students down. I mean, it seemed that came right out of my upbringing in some funny way. Uh, but it said like, you must be you must do your job well. You know, you should not, you know, you should not uh, waste your energy, uh, you know, just passing it through, you know, just working through. I think that came largely from what was the kind of operating value system in the homes that we lived in. Uh, but I think one of the biggest uh, things that I've learned over time, you know, in the sense, of, and it's probably made me very different in every sense of the term, has been this, uh, these two very important things, right? Uh, which is that, that you have, uh, you have to read a lot, right? It is not enough to, uh, to, uh, to, to know what is already there and extensively know about it, but you have to consistently uh, be in the in the process of reading one one. Then man, many years later, I also have begun to realize that there is a need for even to do a good deal of writing in order to keep your reading alive, you know, or in order to keep yourself alive, so to speak. So uh, these two were very important things at the same time, uh, you know. And uh, a third thing, which was very, which has come to stay for a long time, I think, for everybody in the department, and I think I. I, we owe it primarily to Barbara Naidu and to the ethos that she sort of built, uh, in which we were all a very, very integral part, is this idea of, 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 uh, of uh, dealing with classroom curricula, how to convert a silly text like Lorna Doon, which I've, I remember having taught you know, in one of my early years, the pre-university class, all right, but I had to teach that book. I mean, I didn't even heard of it when I came to college. How do you convert that into some sort of meaningful thing? And that, I think, is what led us to doing all this curating of syllabuses and curricula and designing it differently and keeping in mind this the sense that the student is at the center of all this, right? The, the, that this, 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 is, this means something. And in... His, her, you know, um, joy, happiness, and learning is also ours. You know, in some in some very indirect way, comes symbiotic way. This was there. So I think my journey was about a constant series of uh, discontinuities. I I think I, there would be a set of discontinuities, which would mean that the set of departures, and then you consolidated that, and then you had to break that free, and you had to go on like that. So uh, that's how I see it. And I think two things for me stand out in some uh, strange way is, is stand. One is this is this real compulsive need to uh, to continue to to be alive in the in the field, in the in literary studies, in literary in literature, in in all that goes with that, to continue to be alive in with to, to it. And the other is to be of uh, is to be constantly, you know, uh, uh, changing so that you 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 might you might mean uh, something to other people. You know, uh, so that you might be able to deal with your, particularly the students who come to us uh, in some senses. 
right? I think this is a, a sort of a, a important a shift. It, it work. I mean, important journey that has been carried. Sorry, did you say something, Arun sir? No, no, I'm listening. I'm listening. So, uh, so I think this is for me the big thing to 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 be able to uh, to uh, to be both, uh, you know. Uh, in conjunction with things as to also juxtapose them in some sense. That for me is, you know, I'm a bit of a bit like that, right? In my mind, I think in these kinds of ways rather than other ways. So, uh, so I, that's the sort of thing, things that you are aligned with, things that you are breaking away from. And how, what does that mean when you talk about it or when you get people to talk about, about them, you know, and, and so on. So I think, uh, these things mean a lot in terms of the journeys that we have had in the department. Uh, you know, so at least in the department for me, you know, it's been about that. Of course, there have been great friendships and great, lovely uh, work cultures and uh, extraordinarily, uh, you know, uh, evocative, you know, um, changes that have come into people's individual beings because of these things, great friendships, great uh, community work and uh, great self, you know, relationship. You know, we have not been, this is not to say we have always been, you know, you know, kind hearted to each other all the time. You know, we've had our differences. We argued very, you know, violently sometimes, you know, but we, we continue to have that cup of coffee, that drink, that meal together and, you know, shared very deeply in that sense. I think within this framework, that's what I think came about for me in terms of that journey. So for me, the, the departures and the continuities were in terms of dealing with uh, myself being alive to the field I am part of. And changing, uh, you know, as time progressed in the same. Right? So that's, I think, how it worked for me. Thank you, Christian. Uh, I think listening to you is in some sense an, uh, a retracing of the journeys that each one of us have made at various points. Yeah. You know, uh, starting with that moment when you step in and then feel slightly smaller than the job that's been given, that's to, you, that's been given to you. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the beginning of, an, of, yeah. a, of a need. You know? Yeah, absolutely. You just put that right on that bang on it. Yeah. Mini, would you like to take yeah. this idea of departures and continuities and tell us sure. how you look at it? Sure, sure. So uh, I think I agree with what was just said because um, our journeys begin, like you said, Arul, when you step into the department. So when you're raw and new, you're just out of college, you really don't know what to expect. And uh, it's it's a new thing. Nobody really teaches you to um, actually go and teach a class. So you come with a lot of fear and uh, apprehension and, you know, you're intimidated and then you take your first class and you really want to run away and you tell yourself, you know, I'm not meant to, I'm not cut out to be a, a teacher and all of that. But then when you meet people in the department who talk to you, who have conversations over coffee, over uh, 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 lunch at the table. And uh, I'm, I'm remembering Barbara now. Um, she was such a cementing force. She would, you know, welcome the younger people in the department and, and she would tell us, it's okay, this is your first year and uh, things will get better. You, you, you will, you know, learn how to handle students in class. And so that gives you some kind of, or gave me some hope when I joined the department. And then I spoke to Cherian when once I was really uh, afraid of a certain class. I did not know how to handle the boys in that class. And I was so new that I almost was in tears. But uh, he said, don't get angry. He said, you, you just have to uh, learn how to do this. And uh, uh, Etienne would tell me, many of his stories of students in his class who troubled him when he joined college. And he said, it's all okay. It's all part of the game. And this is how you... And um, taking that journey forward from then to now has been a great thing. And I think over a period of time, I've changed as a teacher. When I joined the department, I was very stiff. I was very scared. 
and I was um, I did not know whether this was the thing that I should be doing. But now when I think back, I have no regrets. I love my job. I'm passionate about what I'm doing. And I realized that I love students so much that, you know, everything that you do centers around reading, writing and the students, because what you take to class is what you bring to it, because you bring yourself to the class and each student brings, uh, uh, you know, himself, herself, themselves into the class. And then there is that interaction that takes place. So when I studied both in my PUC and my degree uh, English classes, I think I was one of those very quiet students who oh, got lost amongst the crowd because we didn't really have too much of an interaction. It was very quiet, just few people in class spoke and we were never encouraged to write or read. We, we just did the textbook and that was all. Right. So when I began teaching, I realized that there, I, I was reading and you know writing and learning along with the students. And that's when the focus shifted, like Barbara said, from teaching to student Learn. learning. So you're only facilitating that learning. Yeah, and along the way you also learn. So that's something I learned. And then suddenly I realized it's so beautiful to have conversations with students in, in, a, in a classroom. There's so much that you're learning every day. So uh, for me, it's a departure from a very conventional orthodox classroom where I did not contribute at all as a student. I just sat there, I wrote my answers and I went away. Um, I wasn't passionate about taking that further unless I was motivated to read on my own. I wasn't really given that push by by you know people there, so I felt that I should do that. And when I reached this department, I think this was the right place to be in because everyone was helping each other, and we were all in it together. And uh, I learned how to work as a team. I learned, I learned what it meant to stand up for the department, and uh, have conversations. And sometimes it's OK to wear your heart on your sleeve. And, and that's what I believe. Sure. So it has always been good. No regrets mm -hmm. whatsoever. I love being in the department. And of course, like uh, Charin and Ethan were saying, great friendships. We've, we've had, um, you know, uh, lots of maybe we've had our own uh, different ideologies or different ways in which we function or, you know, certain things that we may not agree with, but that has it's not come in the way of our friendship or uh, our work. And I think that ethos is something that is really lovely. It makes you want to do more for the department and for the student. Yeah. <laughs> Arul? Yeah, uh, it was one of the uh, big that uh, are going to turn up in a conversation like this are the uh, our memories of individuals who uh, shaped the department in various ways and are not here to join the conversation with us today. Uh, you mentioned Barbara, who was uh, a function of influence for many of us uh, with her ideas of uh, democratizing the interaction between uh, students and teachers, as also reducing as uh, to the extent possible the kinds of hierarchies that seem to bring mm -hmm. in departments yeah. uh, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, higher Absolutely. education. I yes. think we should also call on several other memories. Um, I worked with John Zachariah for only about a month and a half, mm -hmm. right? but uh, he was already a kind of legend associated with the department. Uh, People mentioned St. Joseph's and sort of also mentioned John Zachariah in the same breath. And when you got to know him, you got to know him as this person who could do the stiff polyp uh, emulation when required, but was also this person with a tremendous sense of fun and the capacity to launch into a diglossic self to speaking an entirely different language altogether. Mm, absolutely. Right? Mm. Uh, speak Shivajinagar Urdu and Austin Town Tamar and Majestic Kannada and uh, roll them all together in English. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, and, uh, 
was in that, in that sense a maker of many memories for us. I can remember a situation when the name Gagul came uh, forward for uh, 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 when somebody's uh, fortunate choice of menu for high tea right, became code word for serious mismanagement. The code word, in this case, being Ban Varaparam. Uh, <laughs> right? So John had this, had this amazing way of <laughs> linking two different worlds all together. The yeah. stiff and proper uh, baritone English uh, presence that he could very effortlessly call out of the air. And his other completely antique self that would crack up and crack you up and yeah. keep you going. Right? Uh, I think uh, <coughs> John's energy is something that has stayed on in the department even after yes. he left and went on to yeah, become yeah. principal of the cathedral yeah. and later at Bishop Cotton. Right. It's sad that he's with us, but it's good to see that he left so much of himself behind with us. Mm. And that, that continues to be on in our conversation with each other. Um, the department has seen many people come and go, and all of them have become part of our conversations and memories. Mm. Uh, Father Hedwig is another person we should remember. Uh, I think all of us uh, have either acquaintance or meeting or longer memories with him between us. Um, yeah, that list is quite a long list, actually. And I think uh, maybe at some other meta, we should do a little uh, session around uh, stories we remember of each other and uh, of yes. people who are not here with us yes, as well. Yes, absolutely. Right. It'd be good. So yeah. I'm sure there's a paying public that would like to know why Cherian would stop talking if the magic phrase night was uttered <laughs> in his vicinity. <laughs> uh, or uh, why Ethian would start spluttering a little bit and say, hey, this is not fair, okay, this is not fair. If you said Naipaul and said good writer in the same breath. Um, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, just, sir. Just, just as you bristle with Harold Bloom. Ah, Harold Bloom. Harold Bloom, <laughs> Harold Bloom is bristled really about for, for everybody. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Say Harold Bloom, and you get session. Harold Boat. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a separate session in its own right, perhaps. Yeah, sure, sure. Yes, sure. But, yes. Uh, I think, I think uh, since we have young people, impressionable minds and all of that, in the best Socratic tradition, we should do a little bit to corrupt them. Sir. So, Charyan, I pass the uh. mic to you now. Uh, one funny story from that you remember from your many years uh, teaching in the department. Sure. If your story isn't funny, I'll remember a story about you. Uh, <laughs> right? So I think uh, that little stimulus to your memory is perhaps necessary. But we'll do this little ritual. We'll get everyone to tell us one story that they remember. I do. Uh, can be funny at their own expense, at the expense of other people. That's all right. We're all friends here. We can deal with it. Uh, Charyan, over to you. What story would you like to tell all of us? Yeah, since you recall John Zachariah, no. I, I remember something associated with uh, production. We had all these wonderful productions, theatre productions back then. Uh, in, in fact, in 1984, uh, we began with um, uh, Murder in the Cathedral, first staged at All Saints Cathedral. All Saints, sorry. Uh, yeah, church. And then the next year, the same thing was staged at Chaudaya. And then after that, we had, um, uh, I think, The Good Doctor. Uh, and then we had uh, As You Like It, a Shakespeare production. 
and then of course uh, neil simon's a good doctor was followed by i think a year or two later uh, two years in succession soldier of the cross which was on ignatius of loyola and a, a more uh, ambitious version of the same thing uh, called uh, ignatius of loyola the next year somewhere in 1992 uh, or 91 uh, in all of this <laughs> there was a lot of activity getting props organized uh, rehearsing etc i remember back in 1985 when we were doing uh as you like it shakespeare's as you like it <laughs> we we had all you know uh, it was an open house and we invited anyone from any department who was enthusiastic and wanted to be part of the team john, john was open to all that as director and uh, so i was helping along with the script and uh, with with uh, i wrote a prologue in shakespearean style uh, for uh, for uh, as you like it which was delivered by jagdish raja and uh, I, i remember that uh, we we were rehearsing the idea was to make the stage look uh, for the setting of the forest of arden scene and all that uh, as natural as possible with a few boughs of uh, cut from trees and so on but we had this chap called sundaram oh no, no that's <laughs> i still remember sundaram joined the year before that and he was he talked talked 19 to the dozen he was an iit graduate he was from physics department but he joined along for the ride and uh, he was a fun sort of chap on the one hand and but, but on the other so idiosyncratic i still remember the first glimpse i had of him he had come at that time he was in iisc and he had come to uh, call me to judge an event uh, he of course had made a call and all that and then he turns up in uh, in a hired car and he steps out i find that he's smoking a cigarette and into a very peculiar kind of cigarette holder which is actually the barrel of a pen which he has cut at the other end and so uh, it was this uh, this he thought of himself as some great innovator or whatever i guess and so etienne you'd remember this <laughs> <laughs> so he had all these you give it to me and say okay you can have it uh, john, john would say okay uh, the this this was the guy who was handling the props and the stage arrangements backstage and, crew and all that yeah and he has this he has this session with the with the backstage crew where he he uses a board to talk about the stage and he divides it into things like e a b c uh, d e e prime and so on and he says in <laughs> like some physics <laughs> uh, lecture or something but <laughs> what finally uh you know what was really a little disturbing and funny at the same time was that in order to make absolute uh, authenticity happen he ordered a massive tree trunk <laughs> and <laughs> he had it transported to chaudaya and i don't think john knew very much about this but at chaudaya when this tree trunk was delivered and it was about to be brought to center stage the chaudaya manager came running in a panic and he said what are you people doing <laughs> you know he says you'll damage this whole stage and everything and so that <laughs> i remember that uh, this was his pet idea and it uh, sundaram turned all the colors of the rainbow eventually they had to give up that uh, jettison the idea that trunk was not, never allowed to hey, be the, uh, the chaudaya said no we can't test it take yeah. it <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think something like that happened. So I still remember that was really uh, funny. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that's one funny incident I can remember offhand, just like that, way back from what, what, thirty, thirty odd years ago. Twenty? No, more than that. In eighty-five, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I hope that was at least amusing, if not funny. <laughs> compliments, Terian, on remembering a story that was not injurious to your own sense of self in any way. <laughs> 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 My sense of self. I'll tell you another one very quickly. 
Ah, very you know? good. Go ahead. Yeah. I can see quick preemptive action being taken. Yes. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you, all, you all know Nazarius Manohar. Uh, yes. uh, he, he was an actor there. And, you know, I was entrusted with the job of, uh, you know, pro being a prompter. I, I, I was mm. located at the side wing. Mm. And then, you know, the action goes on. And I get so carried away by it that I forget to keep pace with the lines in the, te in the text I'm holding. And uh, Nazarius is doing, uh, what was the role? The good doctor. No, no, this is uh, in... Uh, As you like it. As you like it. And he was doing Orlando, I think. Orlando, or, he played Orlando. Yeah. Or one of them. He's, he said... Orlando, uh, he played Orlando. Yeah, Orlando, I think. And so he was... Suddenly he forgets his lines. But he's so good at it, at ad-libbing. And he says, in very Shakespearean language, uh, a line that is not in the text, he says, Hark, I hear someone calling. And he comes to the edge of the stage and me... Dumb donkey, I just do. I've lost the script. I've, I've lost the line. I've lost the place in the script. And I just can't help him. Luckily, and I, I have his torch with me. <laughs> Luckily, he remembers his life and he gets back. He got no help from me whatsoever. But anyway, it's left me so embarrassed. Uh, but I think probably the sight of my face would have <laughs> helped him remember his lines. Uh, line anyway, because. You know, I, I was in any case, I'd prove totally useless in helping him with uh, finding the line. Anyway, so that was how it was. Super, super. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are you, Ethier? That's a story. Yeah, I'm, I have many stories. I don't know which one to pick now. I can tell you stories about the hostel also. So I said, some more. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you a story about the hostel. I mean, I, I hope uh, <laughs> it'll be okay. It's just uh, um, it's a, a long time ago. A long, long time. Ago. 83, 83. The year I joined, I, um, you know, I we got you late. Uh, sorry, you can say right the archives. I know, but I'm just worried. I mean, I'm just uh, hoping that it won't. <laughs> anyway, so I remember very distinctly. I was I was one of the professors who was, was in the hostel, and I held no position, looking after position. I said no, no, no. Someone said I was assistant warden, and all that. I said no, no, I'll stay there because I I was primarily some sort of a you know no, nocturnal creature in the sense that I liked uh, staying up late and you know and doing stuff. So. One particular evening, a friend of mine and I had gone off for a film, and by the time we got back, the gates were locked. This is a common enough feature, okay? Uh, so we went at the, right to the back and tried to jump, you know, climb over the, this one. And what happens most sincerely? Imagine for me, okay? The two hostile dogs, they were doing pretty good beauty out there watching people you know i remember distinctly my friend imagine what, what that would have meant for me in particular right yeah so i had to get out again and walk around for a, quite a long time you know before we went to another side of the hostel and got in and then i had to unfortunately sleep with her in another friend's room that night that was Quite bad because the, this, these dogs came rushing even dead. <laughs> okay. okay. I, and I am, I, so I, and at that time I was mortally scared of them. Mortally yeah. is not to worry. That's I mean, where the phobia began. Yeah, I, you know, terrible. Terrible. Visible, right? Yeah. And this, this guy is coming right up, right up. Right? So we had to go. The next morning at 6 30 or 7, we had to get up and get to the room. Otherwise, I go in there and I go to my room and I find it double locked, which meant that the proof that the warden had locked up the room from out or, or couldn't get it. And what do I see sitting next to it? That very same set of dogs, you know, one of them sitting next there, watching it, what I went into, growling. God, this was one of my worst nightmares that I've ever had. And I had to go and, you know, plead and all that. Of course, the warden was very fond of me. He said, I, 
No, next time you tell me and go, if you're going to the film and all that, you tell me and go, you, I'll give you a key, you can take, come inside. And like that. <laughs> hmm. well, very nice, man. But I think this was one of the, at least like, yeah, picture, I can picture it like it happened yesterday, no? even now, for me. <laughs> so these were uh, terrible, frightening things, yeah. These, they will shine in the night as if they were like, you know. so good piece of advice for everybody who's in the hostel, never try that at all. <laughs> Same Sorry. advice from, from here. Uh, <laughs> Mini, is there a story you're able to remember? Um, there are so many stories now, I really don't know what I should say, but I will give you an embarrassing moment. This was uh, for one of our board of studies and uh, Nazi was uh, part of our board of studies. He was the external member and um, we were supposed to go for lunch after the first round of meeting and I by mistake locked him up in the parlor room. You remember in the PG block <laughs> and uh, and then uh, we stepped out and we were, you know, going out for lunch or so. And then suddenly I realized that Nazi is not there in the crowd and I'm looking for Nazi. And quickly I just went back and I said, did I lock him by mistake in the parlor room? And I opened the door and Nazi is standing there. I said, I'm extremely sorry. I'm, I asked him for his forgiveness and he, he was like, okay, don't worry. It's all right. It's all right. I'm so glad I went immediately and I realized that by mistake I'd locked him up because he had just gone into the restroom and, and I looked into the room, there was no one there. So I locked the door. And this has also happened in the department uh, once or twice where I've locked people by mistake or I've got locked by mistake. And so, yeah, that's one of the things that I remember. I was very embarrassed and I asked him for his forgiveness and he said, OK, it doesn't matter. It's fine. It was done out of, I mean, you didn't really do it uh, intentionally, so it's OK. Yeah, that's the story. I, I feel I embarrassed myself by doing this uh, to Nazi. So, yeah. I like the way you say that's the story. Uh, the department has several volumes of stories. Oh, no, no, no. Which leads to the public domain at the right moment. <laughs> no, this is the story I remember. I'm sure. Answer. That way each one of us does. I think, yeah? uh, uh, having a convenient memory, Professor. Yeah. Um, I, I was just wondering about... Uh, I was just wondering about what's behind Mini. All those owls. Oh yeah, these are uh, my psychedelic owls. These are my psychedelic owls. You, are you at home? Or? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're working uh, from home. Yeah. So this is the background. This is the meta background. Yeah, yeah. I know it's the meta background. So, but the thing is this: that this whole uh, idea of uh, the English department being, uh, uh, you know, to a significant extent, um, both diurnal and nocturnal. <laughs> of course, <laughs> completely. <laughs> I was much of that. I fight to that, yeah. <laughs> but, but the biggest, the most nocturnal of all was Arul, of course, followed, I think, followed by who? Followed by Mini, I guess. Yeah, no, Arul's, so I, I, I've beaten Arul to it now. No, that's now. Okay. That's now. Earlier, it would have been me and Arul, maybe. I mean, Arul and me, <laughs> we were really night late birds. Yeah. In the sense, I've, you know, done all my work late in the night. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I just I'm, think I'm, I'm, I'm being nocturnal in the department, in the sense that. Oh, like no, that. In the department, okay. no, yeah. I don't know. Oh, Arul's been. The department, yes, Arul. Arul uh, gets if the it's prize. Home, department, then no. It's in the department, no, not at all. Never, never, Arul, yeah. hands down. At home, me, hands down. So I say hoot, and he'll say shoot. Yeah, yeah, ah. yeah. No, <laughs> at home, you are more. You are the most nocturnal. Yes, yes. <laughs> now, now, um, not before I think. No? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it started with uh, evening college. Yeah, really I know. Into the research, yeah. That. Yeah, so, sorry, sir, I, I, I digressed. Yeah, Arul? I've been getting used to that for 25 years now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you two quick stories. One is the story of what an innocent guy I was when I came to the department. I had no bad habits. I brought lunch from home. I went home like an arrow at four o'clock. And then one day Charlie said, why don't you come and have a conversation with us? And uh, I went to some shitty 
put in called Empire with him. And then he said, do you mind if we, you know, if we take? I said, uh, I don't know what to mind. But I said, no, no, I don't mind. Without even really knowing what I was saying yes to. And then I found out about this beautiful 90s Bangalore custom called under the table service. <laughs> which is essentially that you kept the waiter a little bit and you went and got you a bottle of beer. But the only condition that you didn't put your bottle on the table. You kept it at ground level and poured yourself a drink from time to time at ground level. Right? And then he took me after that to another place called Silver Plate. And this under the table service became <laughs> such a common thing that before I knew it, I was drinking from it like I was drinking water. And then the course of history, as it were, was altered a little bit. So, Terrence Alexander, you're a bad man and a bad man. <laughs> 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 people. The other no, but, that but I would you, like but you, to you share your with your mentor Matthew. in this matter. <laughs> <laughs> the other story I would like to quickly share with humanity, because humanity deserves to know this, is the story of how Professor Minimark once sprained her wrist. <laughs> uh, we are physics, biology, and Professor Minimark's uh, nerve system in equal quantities. So, uh, one boy called Titus brought his Actua to the campus one day and uh, asked me to take a joyride on it. So we got on top of the Actua and uh, towed a straight line up and down. Uh, I don't know if she managed to make a turn, but uh, yes, anyway, did. she didn't fall off the bike. Oh, you took a turn. Okay. There are no pictures, so we don't yes. know if that actually happened. <laughs> yeah, it's not enough if you say yes, ma'am. There have to be pictures, there has to be evidence. Anyway, that's not the point to the story. But Professor Minima came back and then she told me I wrote an act of uh, and some part the way she said it uh, nettled me a little bit. So I said, it's one thing to get onto an activa and press the start button and take off in a straight line. It's another thing to park it. You can truly claim to have written an activa only when you are able to park it, right? So, do, can you put it on the on, on the center stand, right? And I said, this is how you put it on the center stand. You uh, bring the stand down and you push the the vehicle back on the stand, and it sits on the stand. And then what happened was this strange combination of the optimism of biology going against the laws of physics, right? <laughs> Professor Minimark uh, attempted to park the bike on the center stand. She did most of it correctly. She looked at the bike. Uh, she said, I will park it on the center stand. Both of which are excellent preliminaries. Task. And then for some reason she decided to try and lift the undercarriage of the activa and put it on the center side. Right? So before my interested but horrified eyes, there was this uh, sprightly young lady lifting 100 kilos of the uh, activa and putting it on the center, trying to put it on the center stand. Right? And then uh, the next day she came back with her arm in a sling and said it was all my fault. Yes, right. not arm in a sling. So all I did was wrist, wrist. put it on a center stand. Yeah. I didn't say lift it with your two hands and put it on the center stand. Yeah, but, but uh, uh, thanks to you. Professor I... Mary Park is, is famous for uh, reading instructions. Right. You forgot the sprained ankle. Be... You were responsible for my sprained ankle too, yeah, uh, just like you were for my stone ligament, in my wrist. There yeah. Four notebooks and six videos, which have lots of incriminating evidence of <laughs> Professor Minimark and her, and her uh, relationship with the English language, amongst other things. These will be published in books uh, in the interest of providing suffering humanity. A good laugh. Uh, 
All right, so that was storytelling time. We have about 10 minutes to go. So I'll do two things very quickly. I'll touch upon this departure and continuities thing very briefly, and then we'll see if there are questions. Uh, we'll answer maybe one or two questions, and then we'll stop for today. All right, so the biggest thing I want to say about our team for today, departures and continuities, is that they seem to sit in a nicely paradoxical sort of relationship with each other, mm -hmm. that the continuities we are able to find come from sort of being able to gather our courage and make departures, and whatever continuities we are able to build today come from moments of departure in the past. Among um, these, I would class uh, being able to focus on general English and to look at the general English experience as the central identifying theme of the work that we do in the department. Absolutely. Uh, it's an important thing for us to have done. We did it quite unconsciously, but at that moment, I think we were going against the grain of how English departments are constituted in our country. General English is no man's land. Um, English departments work by a kind of savanna science in the sense that the teaching of literature is central and most important. And the business of equipping people uh, in terms of dealing with a strange language is always uh, work that somebody else has to do. Right? Uh, I think one important thing that we were able to do was to reverse those priorities. And that set of departures, uh, both in the 80s and then again in the late 90s, continues to frame a, provide the momentum for uh, many of the things that we continue to do today. Um, all the other things we've done, right, in terms of restructuring the MA program or starting EDP and then uh, progressing towards uh, what is possibly the best BA course we worked on, CPE, uh, and then the newer experiments such as JIP and DP. All of those have derived their impetus from the, from the small experiments we did with making general English uh, work. Uh, and that's the departure out of which these continuities today uh, have emerged. Um, I'd also like to point out that as of today, um, St. Joseph's become St. Joseph's University. The mm. act has been officially passed. Yes, it is. And, yes, it is. Mm. And yes. So that means that the idea of looking at new directions becomes something that uh, is both an urgent and an emergent responsibility for us. So when we look forward, it is by building upon what we have been able to do so far. And I think one of the key uh, bits of work that we will have to do as an English department in a Jesuit university will be that of uh, building heavily, investing heavily into linguistics as a means of justice, as a means of uh, investing in linguistic diversity, protecting, archiving, and preserving linguistic diversity, especially the diversity of small uh, marginalized communities. Right? I think that's a place from which great work can happen. Yes. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, another good new direction, a related new direction, one that is already inherent in the work we are doing, is to move towards research and uh, knowledge production in the field of inclusivity. Uh, we have the potential to bring Dalit scholars together to produce good life writing and 
knowledge production about uh, various forms of our aesthetics. Uh, it's a direction into which we should went both sooner than later. Uh, to that is also the idea of teacher development. Uh, who should be the English teachers of the future? Where should they come from? What, uh, in what ways should they be enabled for the job of uh, taking the English language forward as a bridge builder, as a way of providing new opportunities for uh, people who have been denied access and equity. That idea of teacher development is something we have to invest in. For the longest time, we've been surrounded by the scientism of the discipline known as ELT, or English Language Teaching. Yeah. I think it needs to be replaced by a much more uh, culturally sensitive idea of teacher development, of taking the idea of teaching into marginalized communities and finding people who can be teachers and agents of negotiation, agents of bridge building, right, between mainstream traditions and local traditions in the ways that are possible. Yeah. I, the last thing I'd like to connect to in terms of these possible new directions is to look at this engagement with language as producing directions such as translation, such as a proper valuing of the idea of writing as discipline, as method of knowledge production, as specialization to give writing the academic seriousness that it already deserves. Right? And for us to just play a part in a larger school of letters, of language letters and translation uh, in the years to come. So those, I think, would be the inherent continuities available to us from the departures we have begun to make. But I'm sure there are other departures we can make and other continuities that we can thus build. So. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, well, that's well put and it's a very good way of envisaging the future yeah. for the department. Yes, that's, that's just like it. I mean. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. We have like a minute or two left before we uh, before the next program can start. So let's just see if there are any questions for us. One of the advantages of being the oldies in the picture is that you can preemptively squelch questions. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if that has happened. Now, I, I can see Vinay on the screen. Does he have a question? Vinay? Was it? Okay, I can't see. I can't see him. Our colleague. <laughs> Not a student. Is there a question? Oh, Vinay. Okay. Is there a question? No, I, I didn't say anything. I don't see any. Oh, you, you mean the backdrop? Yes. All right, guys, if you have questions, either unmute and ask or type it into the chat window. Um, we have a long history of dodging questions between us, so. <laughs> We'll keep talking for four hours. While the questions come, yeah, is someone asking a question? Oh, yeah, there it is. I can see. Mini's uh, item was the question yet. Oh my God. Yeah. 
the question seems to be circulating around Minnie's torn ligament. Arul's okay. opened a Pandora box. They'd be very no, curious. No, now, what is the story behind Mini Ma'am's ligament tear that Arul sir caused? <laughs> Wait for the book. <laughs> I have all stories in one shot. Uh, sir, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. We can hear you, but we don't know who you are. Yeah, yeah. Muthu Kumar, Muthu Kumar, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Go on, go on, ask. Ask Muthu. No, no, I'm not, I'm not asking any question, but I just enjoyed the, uh, uh, you know, uh, Professor Etienne uh, you know, funny incident on the... Austin. Uh, yeah, so... I, so I can... Professor no, Muthu Kumar, uh, just keep that it's completely <laughs> confidential. No? Don't tell okay, everybody. No, no, no. <laughs> I know I'm you are living in... He's no, in the no, hostel no, right now, so the hostel, he can relate to it. 1983. So I, I can relate to it, and I'm very happy that the dogs are not, uh, you know, around. So. <laughs> Good. So Good I, to know. Yeah, yeah, I can relate to it. So it was very funny, sir. Yeah. So, Kumar, you are hostel in our campus? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes sir. Okay. I am just, I am lying down, and I am seeing, I am listening to the, you know, conversation. I am just. Okay. <laughs> so I, in the hostel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the hostel and uh, yeah, but i think now we don't have that kind of restriction at least for the faculty yes anytime go that's it no, no i didn't have any restrictions it's just that uh, you know i hadn't done what was necessary to be done which is to okay. tell people that i'm going out you know what i mean yes, i just yes, forgotten yes. to tell the warden that i'm going out otherwise he would have made some you know some arrangement for it or something like so the commonest thing, if you've forgotten, is to just do the jumping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for bringing out that, uh, you know, particular. Yeah, right, uh, right. It was my fault, not his uh, or anybody else's. No, no, no. It was, I'm just saying it was very amusing. Thank you for. <laughs> it's a very funny me. experience. I won't forget it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. But Etienne's gotten over his phobia for dogs. He's much better. Now. Uh, much yeah. better, but not completely. It's still yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. And Remember uh, the times I, I had to protect you oh from the dogs? Oh, God, yes. You <laughs> bet your life. How many times you protected me? <laughs> the worst thing. Okay. Who was protecting whom? Right. Uh, uh, hello. He was involved, then I think we have to check on whether the dogs felt protected or not. Hello, excuse me, <laughs> Professor Arul Mani. <laughs> Arul. <laughs> Are you tired? Uh, mm. Good. I, uh, what I would, I, I at, the, at this point, I, I'd like to, uh, you know, wish Arul and the team and the, everyone in the department all the best as you move towards the university, university. status mm. and uh, all the things that have been planned for the future. May may they may they all work out well. May new uh, vistas and ideas open out for you all. Uh, and uh, we'll all be there to kind of cheer you along. <laughs> As, uh, There's an unnecessary Victorian air about uh, uh, what Sharon is saying. Uh, whatever what plans we have, they so definitely include you and your kids. So, okay. uh, we'll be waving from the sidelines and you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We we have to we have to be true to our uh, retirement form. No? <coughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> absolutely. That that well sounded very much like Nandapati, Father Nandapati. <laughs> Arul's, Arul's, oh God. The, <laughs> Etienne, do you remember how he would say well? Well. Well. His, his beard. well. <laughs> That's all. Well. That means, okay, just ignore that. You know. Yeah. It, <laughs> well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I just want to point out to something about community that I think is perhaps important for us to recognize. Among the uh, 
values that we have is that we are a community of travelers you know a group of people traveling together you know They're very different from each other uh, we are a very plural community in that sense but we we like to travel together you know i mean it's an interesting yeah. that's the spirit uh, yeah. it's an interesting option like a pack yeah it's mm-hmm. like a you know i don't want to say that because <laughs> it seems like to have been a very tried and tested the like the pack you know you know anything if anything anything that guy got Some, right the best for the pack <laughs> anything something that to find so sorry pilgrim without the disadvantage of a chaucer <laughs> this uh, <laughs> i don't get uh, that i didn't get that arul's bra- voice is breaking yeah it several pilgrims without the disadvantage of a chaucer uh yeah right there's some strength in that you know which i think is something uh, both academically and uh, personally and, and and it's that symbiosis it's that uh, coming together it's that conjunction that i think is uh, yeah and i think we have journeyed together for a long yeah. time right and we've also been together for a long time yeah. but not to so, deny that Yeah but I think even otherwise even in the very small moments you know for instance big yeah. bre- some breaks that we have made right you know yeah. general english to optional english or it's stuff stuff like that you know yeah. or general english into two parts of general english and then you have additional english you know all that we have tried out even at, there are many many moments right it's not that as if that these 25 years uh and we are talking about 25 years of our work yeah. right it's about uh, for me they are each part of that 25 years has also been about being together despite you know not giving up our differences that's the yeah. beauty of this uh, thing yeah. you know yes yeah, so well done to our differences but we have never you know we just travel together you know and i mean that's never come in the way of our either work in the department or personal friendship with and, each other yeah 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 it's never yeah. come in the way uh, for us right yeah uh, it's, which i think is really beautiful so I, i i think we, need, i think we yeah. treasured the difference right yeah, we, that, that was the we way to be, be right yeah. i should love uh, salman rushdi and arul should uh, you know not you know yeah. you know you know and uh, that does you I, i should uh, not like that polini should love him you know <laughs> so you know so and many many things like between all of our all the others again you have a question question for i don't have a question so. Yeah, yeah. No, there's yeah, a question. I have a question that's have come a up question. on the chat on box. The chat box. Uh. What next? Now that tra- travel seems to be out of the picture, Aspranee. Oh, there's there's a lot of traveling inside his bedroom itself. Me, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, oh, the Pranay. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I don't know if I will make another beginning. You know. um you know um perhaps i must begin again you know as the case as you know these old travelers are about i remember having if you are if you have been in djp as i have known uh to have done uh, work with you uh, uh we should uh, learn from ulysses i guess and travel again yeah uh along the same road maybe not along different roads maybe uh but we'll travel again uh i'm just taking a break i've just uh, you know taken a break so it's like that covid Or somebody covid said as you tell are covid decided that etienne sir needs a break <laughs> no no i i'm not sure i wanted to i just I'll be very honest. I wanted to rest in yeah. every sense of the term. Yeah. On the yeah. one hand, and I had lots of things that I needed to pay attention to as well. So that's the reason. Tenzing, of course. <laughs> We shall ride uh, Tenzing this time. Azivelu. Oh, all the best. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um. I think we sort of overshot. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. A little bit. So uh, I'll quickly wrap up. Thank you, everybody, for the conversation, for the stories, 
and for the promise that there will be further stories the next time we get together to do this. Thank you for uh, all the conversation today. Thank you to that lovely audience there for not asking any too many questions. Seventy of them. Yeah. <laughs> Old people can't answer too many questions. Anyway. Uh, we'll bring this to a stop and say more conversation at the next meta. Uh, back to the MC and uh, from there on to the next program. Thank you guys. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. It's fun. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, each one of you. Thank you, my dear friends, especially my old friends, all of them. Mini, Charya, Tarul, yeah. Anika. Thanks for you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, Anika. Also. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, professor, for such a lovely evening. Uh, we laughed a lot and we had a lot of fun listening to you all having had fun. Um, I guess even though you all are oldies now, you are all still very young at heart, as we can see with so much laughter and so much joy still. Um, anyways, uh, so that with that, we come Thanks. to the end of uh, departures and continuities, this panel. Uh, please find the link, uh, which is in the chat box, to the next panel discussion that we have with, uh, which is Professor Pramod Harley in conversation with Siddhartha Vaidyanathan. Uh, remembered city, remembered school. Uh, so we will see you all then, after which we will be having